there are a lot of ways to make Fallout New Vegas more difficult. You could make it so you die from taking any damage. You could force yourself to use horrible weapons. You could even only move backwards to get around the world. But what if you wanted to use what the developers intended to make it more difficult? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas' hardcore mode without eating, sleeping, or drinking? First, some housekeeping. Anytime I start a new playthrough in New Vegas, I'll get the opening shots for my beginning of the playthrough spiel, then I'll reload a save I made early last year. I do this because of one of the mods I use, Project Nevada, which you can think of as a base level mod that has things hundreds and thousands of other mods use and require. This mod allows you to change a bunch of different settings, spawn rates for ammo, your hit points based on your endurance skill, your run speed when a weapon is equipped, almost anything, but I prefer the default New Vegas settings. So rather than resetting everything manually every single time, I load an old save, use a console command to change my name and the way my character looks, and go on as if nothing happened. That's why I don't put too much time or effort into the way my characters look. That's it, the curtain is closed, back to the game. I went all in on what you'd expect me to for special stats. Luck is high, because I can hear the roulette table calling me from here. Charisma is a dump stat as always, and the rest are just there. Skills are speech, repair, and medicine. Traits are skilled to boost all stats, and trigger discipline to make gunshots more likely to not miss. Right now, time is of the essence. In hardcore mode, you must keep track of your drinking, eating, and sleeping if you want to survive. It's a fairly basic system. There's a tracker in your pit boy, just like you'd see for radiation. Once any of the four, radiation, sleep, hydration, or food, reach 1000, you die. Radiation isn't really an issue in this run, but it's still there. Sleep increases by one point every 50 seconds. Food increases twice as fast, at one point every 25 seconds. Then there's hydration, that increases by one point every 10 seconds. Now what does that mean? It means that because I cannot sleep or consume liquid sustenance in game, I only have 10,000 seconds of playtime to beat Fall of New Vegas or else I die. That's 166 minutes or 2 hours and 46 minutes to beat the game. That's not a lot of time. Thankfully, as anyone who dreads human interaction will be able to tell you, time itself seems to slow down when you're trying to think of a way to respond after someone says something. So those 10,000 seconds don't include dialogue or time spent in your pit boy. I dropped the Vault 13 canteen, and my first stop in this race against the clock was Cazador Canyon to discover the Great Cons early. That was a mistake, a boo-boo if you will, because there's no reason why I had to do this now. I could have easily fast traveled to Good Springs after I got myself a bunch of weapons and stim packs and made the journey wrapped in the safety of my own arms. Cazadors stung me a couple times, I reloaded a quick save after most of them, any damage has the potential to be a problem. I also got a surprise hug from a deathclaw. It managed to swipe my ass a few times as I expertly bobbed and weaved around the rocks while passing through a viper camp who would distract themselves from me with the monster. That worked out for the most part. The Deathclaw either got bored or died, but the Vipers kept coming after me, and I could tell from their scent that they had good weapons on them. Problem was, they were Viper leaders, and they had solid armor like combat armor or metal armor. My best ranged weapon was only a 10mm pistol. I had a grenade launcher too, but I wanted to conserve as much ammo as I could. Eventually, I managed to decide that killing them was a waste of time, so I sidestepped out of their line of sight, leveled up, you know what I put the skill points into entered the Canyon of the Red Rock, spoke to nobody, and knew that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to kill people with visibly powerful guns. My throwing spears were broken and wouldn't fly. Stupid fucking game. Good news is, I never leave someone else's home without a blade. My master would never forgive me if I left unarmed. I took more time than I should have, killing a couple different great cons. I used sneak attacks on them all. I couldn't risk alerting the others of my actions against the only family they'd ever known. With a sniper rifle that I had no bullets for, and the world's fastest firing gun with an AEK and 972 in its name, I returned to Good Springs, bartered briefly with Chet, and began heading for the Strip. I really wanted to stop by Frankie's guns and ammo, but it's a mod location, and killing those within for their weapons felt like cheating for some reason. I killed a few powder gangers littering the road leading northeast towards the Strip, also ended a bunch of puppies hiding out in an overturned semi-truck, and arrived in Sloan like a virus arrives in a new country. Snuffle's leg got the elite treatment option 
because he played basketball and therefore was far more deserving of my medical treatment than any of the ordinary peasants in the area. That was actually one of the Ten Commandments. In times of turmoil, protect the celebrities. Their lives are worth more than your own. Because Lady Luck was disgusted by my performance as of late, I could not kill Snuffles and the few Cory Junction workers without taking very much damage. The experience their bodies offered wasn't worth the hits I'd take or the ammo spent on them. Outside Cory Junction, I immediately discovered Bunker Hill and reveled in the rare opportunity to kill an entire family's worth of Bark Scorpion, which rewarded a nice 9 XP per kill. I wasn't going to work with the Brotherhood at all. Their quest line is too long. Being stripped naked and told to go deal with an NCR soldier eats up valuable time. There's some time to kill as I head towards this trip. My primary concern going into this run wasn't time. Speedrunners have beaten New Vegas without any glitches or exploits in under 30 minutes. Even without any specific speedrun strategy, New Vegas can be beaten in under two and a half hours if you know what you're doing. My concern was what effects the lack of food, water, and sleep would have on my stats. Speech is what I was concerned about specifically. If you consume no water, you'll see decreases in your endurance, perception, and intelligence as the thirst level increases. The bigger that level, the worse the effects. A lack of sleep will hit agility, intelligence, and endurance. A lack of food though, that lowers strength, perception, and charisma, and that's bad. Charisma gives bonuses to barter and speech, the only two skills that can be used to beat New Vegas without shedding any blood or making the vault shed cry. But I planned ahead, or I got lucky that doing no research of any kind worked to my advantage. The lowest a special stat can be is 1. For every point in charisma, barter and speech are raised by 2. The opposite is true as well. If you're suffering from some effect that lowers charisma, barter and speech will be lowered by 2. However, if your charisma is already at 1, there's nowhere for it to go. Which means, the only thing I thought might cause problems is now a non-issue. By this point, I will have witnessed an encounter between the NCR and Fiends, killed an NCR trooper for their outfit, and entered the strip via Camp McCarran. As always, I went straight for the tops to murder Benny. It was a little tough, sorta. Tough in the sense that I made a difficult decision. I really wanted to use the grenade launcher to take out everyone. It was more than powerful enough for it but doing so would put my limbs at risk. My toenails are too precious to me for me to put them on the line. With Benny, the chairman, and almost everyone else in the casino area dead and beginning to rot, I wasted a small amount of time by meeting Yes Man. Siding with Yes Man is the quickest way to beat the game, but if speed is what you're after, it makes no sense to meet with him now. You need to get the platinum chip from Benny and remove Mr. House from Earth before you can tell Yes Man to meet you at the Lucky 38. If you were to do the things in the proper order, you'd get the Platinum Chip, Kill House, and call for Yes Man. What I did was get the chip, meet Yes Man, Kill House, then return to Yes Man, an extra step if you will. In those wasted minutes, I began doing something odd, weird, something I don't remember doing before, using Maria as an actual gun. Then I stopped by Gamora to run amok in their casino. I required as many caps as I could fit in my secret hiding hole. At my peak, I had almost 5,000 caps ready to be fished out of the woman behind the counter. I would have kept going, but it kicked me out of the game and I couldn't find the guy who would offer me rewards for being so lucky. So I left, got my payment from Mr. House, watched in horror as valuable minutes were massacred and stepped on beneath Mr. House's massive ego. And with speech at 100, I entered the White Glove Society gathering house to mindlessly commit felonies. The AEK was phenomenal for maybe a second and a half. There's a reason I hadn't used it. Maria did an admirable job taking the lives of the cannibals inside the casino. One could even say that Maria killed them with an unparalleled level of style and grace. The perfect weapon for the woman who's purposely starving herself to death. A couple grenades were used to mop up the remaining white gloves inside the eating auditorium that I decided should die. Then, like a father looking for a new significant other because he doesn't love his wife or son anymore, I left to become a boomer. Just before setting off for their territory, I sold everything I didn't need to the gun runners and bought some supplies. I wasn't sure what it was I was after, what gun I wanted, but nothing piqued my interest, so I settled on more ammo for the guns I already had, and knew for a fact that the boomers would be licking my feet before this day is done. The boomers were as boring as the mints at the bottom of my grandmother's purse. I killed Melvin, stim-packed my way through their barrage, killed Pearl, killed a few others on my way out, and was almost 40% of the way towards my own demise. I can't confirm this, 
but part of me thinks that the rate at which your thirst level increases gets higher the more thirsty you are. I'll come back to that in a bit. Almost all the pieces had been laid on the table, ready to be used to make a puzzle. After getting Veronica as a companion, I quickly got a few things repaired by Mr. Thirsty, and returned to Hidden Bunker to lose my way in the sandy darkness. Veronica got me inside. I met with Ramos, had done everything with the Brotherhood that I had to, dismissed Veronica, killed Ramos, stole his gun, and went back to the Strip. I took the route through Freeside, instead of using the monorail at Camp McCarran again. This would likely save time in the long run, as I could fast travel directly to the Strip's north gate. Crippled, after a fight inside the tops, I spoke to Yes Man again for some stupid fucking reason. Mr. House was still alive. There was no reason to talk to him yet. Frustrated at the amount of time I'd wasted backtracking through the tops with a broken leg and no way to fix it, I returned to Good Springs, hobbled along the one road leading through town, got a farewell gift from Doc Mitchell in the form of medical assistance that I overpaid for, and my thirst was already up to 600. To give some insight, it was at 370 at 9 minutes 12 seconds into this recording. After about 16 more minutes, it was at 600. Maybe I'm just not understanding this. Thirst increases by one point every 10 seconds. That's six points per minute. Assuming all 16 minutes are gameplay, no loading screens or dialogue or inventory management, that's a theoretical total of 96 points. 16 times 9 is 96. How the hell did it go up 230 points in 16 minutes? I couldn't tell you, but after seeing how dramatically it increased, I became worried that I, like all of you watching this, will run out of time. I immediately returned to the Lucky 38, threw knives into Mr. House. Yes, I bought throwing knives specifically for Mr. House. Told Yes Man to join me, he violently spasmed himself into Mr. House's former living vessel, and I told him a certain someone could bite the dust. I'd say the actual words, but I'm a little concerned that saying something like that in these 2020 times would get me put on a government list. I hadn't gone anywhere near the El Dorito submarine sandwich shop yet. The closest location I'd found was 18A Trading Post. It was surprisingly dark and lonely in the hills southwest of the station. My only companions were dead grass and the plants I've learned to be cactuses of some extreme variety. The NCR were less than enthused by my arrival at the station. What I think made them really mad was when I started launching live grenades at them. They didn't worry for very long. The four inside woke up after I powered the Lucky 38. I'd planned on letting them live, but their mass awakening startled me. Being startled is a satisfactory reason to blow up a group of soldiers. And there's that government list again. With the stage set, all that remained was to travel to the Hoover Dam to finish the fight. I checked my hydration shortly after my arrival. 942 out of a thousand. It went up more than 300 points in less than 15 minutes. Time was not on my side, it would seem. Supplies were limited, morale was low, the dead bodies I'd made were disheartening to those I hadn't killed yet. Yes Man comforted me with a plan of attack. Destroy the generators. The lack of water in my body was beginning to show signs of wear and tear, primarily in the form of an annoying flashing red icon on my HUD. Soon enough, I emerged outside the office, back atop the Hoover Dam. I paid no mind to the battles being waged on the dam itself. My life was almost over. Thirst was at 962. All those mad minutes I did last year have paid off big time. I knew for a fact that I had only moments before I would drop dead, ending the story of Hardcore Carol forever. But like I said, I knew that speech would be unaffected by my advanced dehydration. As long as I didn't accidentally agree to battle the legate to death, I could convince him to stand down, talk General Oliver out of committing suicide by the courier, and I beat Fallout New Vegas' hardcore mode without eating, drinking, or sleeping. There is one last thing to attend to. Those of us who know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two know what's going on during the ending slideshow. There's a man behind the screen reading it. What I wanted to know is what happens if your thirst was at 999 right as you ended the game. Would it tick over to 1000 and kill you during the ending? No. What it does do though is break the game. Your character cuts off the narrator by clearing their throat, then he shuts up and never says another word. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for helping make videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day. Maybe.